Howdy y'all, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are safe and I hope you guys are healthy. My name is Josh and I absolutely love clothing and personal style. So if you're into that type of content, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube as well as follow me on Instagram at where's underscore Galdo. So today I'm bringing you guys a video about a pair of boots that I've been obsessed with. I'm sure if you guys know me, you guys know that I love boots. Any kind of boot I'm usually down for. And recently I've come across a heritage boot that I'm kind of obsessed about. I got three pairs of them to show you guys today. And of course, I will be telling you guys the little bit of history behind the boot. Super excited to talk about it, but it is going to be the engineer boot. And look at these beauties. Come on. I definitely think that uh, these are an underrated boot and a boot that I think a lot of you guys should look into if you're looking into a unique boot, a high quality boot that is also pretty functional. And I'll tell you exactly why in just a second. All right, so first and foremost, why or how did I come across engineer boots in general? Well, on Instagram, I follow a lot of both Americana brands or pages as well as Japanese Americana brands and pages. And a lot of times, paired with selvage denim, you're gonna see this type of boot. For the longest, didn't know what they were, and I decided to do a little bit of research and found out that they are a heritage American boot that originally stems from the 1930s. And with that, I also saw examples that other high-end designer brands made, like VisVim made an engineer boot, as well as Our Legacy fairly recently made one as well. So I was like, if these higher, really expensive brands are starting to make their own rendition of this boot, what exactly is the inspiration behind them? And I just went down this rabbit hole, as I always do with the clothes that I buy. So let me go ahead and share that information with you guys today. Engineer boots initially came about in the 1930s, were initially made by two different companies. I don't know which one made it first. If I had the kind of guess from the things that I've read so far, Chippewa made engineer boots first and then Wesco adopted the kind of silhouette and then made their own uh, engineer boots as well. But why are they called engineer boots? These boots were initially made for people that work on like trains. The dudes at the front of the train kind of making that engine work are called engineers. In those working conditions there were a lot of very hazardous things that could happen to you. Uh, like really hot coals to keep the steam engine going as well as sharp metal objects that are around that work environment. So they needed a boot that was really durable, something that protects your feet, and the high shaft was meant to protect you from any hot coals from like, you know, getting onto your leg. The initial uh, like engineer boots that are like were like, you know, way back when had shafts of the boot that were like really, really tall. I remember I had one at one point that went all the way like, just below my knee so you can imagine that like that's a really large amount of protection for kind of your shin area now one really cool thing about the two companies that produced um engineer boots at its first at its first or from the beginning in the 1930s is chippewa and wesco actually still sell these boots today you can still get them from the original companies that made them way, way, way back when. So as the years go by, these boots were actually adopted by different cultural niches as kind of part of their uniform. After World War II, in the, around the 1950s, where bikers and greasers were kind of a really big subculture, engineer boots were very often used. And if I'm not mistaken, you can actually see engineer boots being worn in the movie Grease, which depicts 1950s greasers. But not only in that depiction of greasers, James Dean and Marlon Brando also wore engineer boots in Rebel Without a Cause as well as The Wild Ones. And I mean, little callback to a previous video of mine, I also talked about The Wild Ones and Marlon Brando when I talked about the shot leather jacket. So I'm just kind of completing the greaser uniform by wearing these boots and a shot jacket. Moving forward in time to the 1960s, engineer boots were adopted by a subculture that maybe not a lot of people would have expected, but the leather daddy community, and I don't know if that's actually what it's called, just from my understanding that's what some people refer to them as. But these individuals were using engineer boots, leather jackets, and all that uh, basically in a sexualized way, and that is very graphically depicted in the artwork of Tom of Finland. The art of Tom of Finland has definitely become very, very famous for depicting homosexual males and dressed in this, you know, biker-esque fashion. And if you're going to look it up, 
fair warning and not safe for work, very explicit content. I'm not going to be showing you guys any examples on this video, but if you're curious, you can look up the artwork of Tom of Finland, just know that it's quite explicit. Moving past the 1960s into the 1970s and further, uh, definitely engineer boots were adopted by a lot of defiant subcultures like skinheads as well as punks. Really, really interesting how that meshes in from initially a function and workwear based garment into like very much the more fashion forward um, environment later on in the 70s and further on. So engineer boots, functionality-wise, are definitely super, super protective of your um, feet as they were originally meant to be. Now, what makes an engineer boot an engineer boot? Well, it is a completely laceless design. The shaft of the boot, the height, can vary greatly, but there is a double buckle design. First buckle up here at the top of the shaft of the boot, which will tighten it around the opening. And then down here, will tighten kind of the ankle area and secure your foot in there. This one has a like stacked heel, which is my preferred boot sole, but they do come also in like wedge soles. Uh, I know the Visvim version has a wedge sole as well as the R Legacy version has kind of like a, also its own version of a wedge sole. This pair right here is like a vintage oil resistant pair. I purchased these off of uh, a Instagram page called Expired Rags. Definitely a really well curated vintage um, page out of Canada. So thank you to Expired Rags for allowing me to purchase these from you. Um, and really the customer service for Expired Rags is great. So definitely plug for them because this pair is pretty awesome. This is from the brand Easy Riders and you can see the kind of embossed branding on the front of the shaft here. But the leather is very thick. Uh, there is a pocket on the side. I don't know what for personally, but on the other side, there also is another pocket right here. I don't know what you could put in there. Maybe a pocket knife, I'm not 100% sure, but Definitely really good pair of boots. Um, I can't speak much for sizing because as a vintage boot, they fit differently. All brands and everything fits differently. Uh, but all in all, great basic engineer boot right here. Now I have two more examples of engineer boots. Absolutely love them. All three are great. The first one was the most basic, most, the newest, best condition one that I own. This next one right here is from a very renowned shoe company, boot company. I've made a video on them before. Obviously it's Red Wing. So this is the Red Wing engineer boot where of course you have the two buckles. There is a little bit of branding and it is a metal like plate that is embedded within the leather itself as well. You've got that stacked heel on the back, which is my favorite. And what it's going to be really hard to show you guys on camera, but I absolutely love the pigmentation of the shoe itself. I obviously bought these second hand and cleaned them up myself, but I don't know if you can tell, these are black boots, but on the toe, you can see in certain lights that they become kind of like fading from black to brown, and I think it's the most beautiful thing. And I, maybe you can see it from this angle. I hope you can, because the nuance in the color is absolutely beautiful. All right, and the last one is gonna be the most, I guess, true to form one because they are from the Chippewa brand who used to originally make them. So this pair right here, they're also the most adventurous and crazy ones that I own. This one right here is a vintage pair of Chippewa engineer boots. Just unbelievably beautiful. They have tonal metal star studs on the shaft of the boot, which is kind of, adventurous for me, but I did like that they were tonal and add definitely a air of texture to the boot. The upper shaft leather is kind of like a pebbled leather, and then the lower part is going to be a more robust, smooth leather. And what I did forget to mention about all of these is they all have a steel toe, so definitely really protective on bottom there. This one has a Vibram stacked sole here so traction is definitely really good and since these are much much older uh these like the shaft of the boot doesn't really keep its shape all too well but that's totally fine once your foot's in there it'll stay up perfectly fine and 
These may be a little weird with the star studs, but honestly, if you wear a, a pants that just covers that portion, it just looks like a regular boot. Um, one thing about this is it has a very prominent welt right over here because it is a con contrasting brown color. I have not decided whether or not I want to actually fill that in with like some sort of leather dye. So I don't know just yet if I want to actually make it completely tonal because I actually kind of like the contrast. It looks really cool, definitely works really well for me. You can see some scuffage and some like friction marks on the leather itself, on the toe as well as the side of the boot. So whoever wore this last, the only, re or the only information I have of its previous life is that um, it was purchased in Japan. So not sure how that kind of calculates into things, but this is kind of the, the fun pair that I own. So definitely really excited to wear these. Now, in regard to styling, I think it is best for these boots to allow them to shine by themselves. Uh, by that, I mean I tuck my pant leg into the shaft of the boot and go ahead and let the entire boot be exposed because when you have details on the shaft kind of like this, I want them to be displayed. I want the height of the boot to be accentuated. I want just every detail to be shown. But if that's not your cup of tea, that's totally fine. These boots also work really well to actually cover cover the shaft of the boot and just kind of have them be worn as like a normal boot. And the only difference is that they don't have they don't have laces or anything like that. So in regard to pant pairings, I as of late, haven't really been wearing a whole lot of straight leg or slim pants, but these really benefit from straight and slim pants because I think they look great when they start stacking. You can wear um, wide leg pants and then uh, stuff the pant leg into the top of the boot. It kind of gives you like a ballooning out effect in the leg and then slim down when it gets to the boot. There's nothing wrong with that. It's I haven't really experimented with that too, too much, but if I wanted to, I, as of late, I wanted to show off the boot. So I go ahead and just tuck a slim or straight leg pant into the shaft of the boot. Looks great. Personally, I would not suggest wearing these with shorts. I mean, I actually haven't tried it, so I'll go ahead and try it. Maybe see how I feel about it, but uh, if I had to predict, I don't think I'm going to like that. In regard to what I think these add to an outfit, I definitely think they are both rugged, but also sleek. Uh, you could get a boot that is like really chunky, really like aggressive in regard to like, um, like a workwear boot, which is totally fine, but these have like a suave, simply because they don't have laces and they're rather slim, slim and slender in the foot. I think these add a kind of ruggedness but sleekness at the same time. I don't know if that makes any sense, but hopefully it makes more sense on the on-body shots that I'll be putting up. But um, yeah, generally speaking, I think that these boots are absolutely amazing. You could get them on eBay, on Depop, on Grailed. Uh, I personally wouldn't spend more than say $200 for a secondhand pair unless they were like a really high-end one. Like uh, Wesco's really go for a lot of money. A Chippewa engineer boot actually goes for pretty cheap. There are very high-end luxury versions of them like Clinch, which, or Clinch and um, Mr. Freedom. Uh, those will be like maybe in the thousands somewhere. And then you could go to like Visvim as well. But if you're really just kind of feeling out how you feel about uh, engineer boots, the vintage route is definitely the way to go. As with every leather boot, definitely exercise good leather care for your boots. So definitely condition them if they get dry, uh, oils and all that. Definitely look that up somewhere else because I am not an expert in that. But take care of your boots in the last a lifetime. Um, the good thing about them is that they're good year welted so that you can get them resold at a cobbler if they kind of wear out. And you can, alongside that, you can get them conditioned at a cobbler as well. So these boots potentially could last you decades on decades. That's about all I have to say uh, for this video. I just want to go ahead and thank everybody who participated in the poll I put up on Instagram. It was between either talking about these boots or talking about tips to kind of foster personal style over trendiness. I'll definitely do that video as well, the tips on that. 
uh, but maybe that'll be next week. We'll see how it goes. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys for participating and engaging with me on all the platforms that I'm available on. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you guys in the next one.